Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope you were able to go to the sacrament meeting today at the church. Um, I can't wait till we can meet together for primary as well. I miss you guys so much. I miss uh, being able to share the gospel with you guys and to fill the spirit with you guys. I know it's so important, so I can't wait till we can go back to church. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about our Come Follow Me lesson for the week. It's They're talking about Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 6 through 9. And they talk about someone I hope you've heard of. His name is Oliver Cowdery. And he was a teacher, and he went to Palmyra, New York to teach. And um, Joseph's younger siblings were in his class. And it was really normal back then for the teacher to live with the family of one of his students. And so he had heard about Joseph Smith, and he was curious about him, and so he asked to live with the Smiths. Joseph wasn't there. He was married, and he lived in Harmony, Pennsylvania, about 100 miles away. But when he moved in with the Smiths, he was asking a lot of questions about the golden plates, about um, the revelation that Joseph Smith had received. And Joseph's parents didn't really say anything. They didn't know if they could trust him. Um, people had been really mean to them in the past and persecuted them. And they were afraid of that happening again. So they didn't really say anything. But after he'd lived with them for a while, they realized he was a good man. Oliver was trustworthy. He was sincere in his desire to know about the gospel. He was similar to Joseph in that he wasn't happy with his choices of what church to go to on the earth. He wasn't satisfied with that. He wanted more, just like Joseph did. And so finally, um, Joseph's parents realized, yes, Oliver is a good man. He's trustworthy. And so they told him about Joseph Smith and about the gold plates and about um, the revelation that he'd received. And Oliver feels like he is supposed to go to Joseph Smith and help him translate the golden plates. And Joseph's parents tell him, well, you need to pray about it to see if it's really what you should do. And so Oliver does. And he says that when he prays about it, I want to quote it just a second. Um, let's look. It says, um, retiring to his bed, Oliver prayed privately to know if what he had heard about the gold plates was true. The Lord showed him a vision of the gold plates and Joseph's efforts to translate them. A peaceful feeling rested over him, and he knew then that he should be the volunteer to help Joseph translate. Okay, so he didn't tell anyone about that answer to his prayer, um, but in the springtime, after the snow melted, he and Samuel, which is Joseph's little brother, walked over 100 miles to get to Joseph Smith's house in uh, Harmony, Pennsylvania. Um, in the meantime, Joseph was having... A hard time um, he had to take care of his farm him and Emma lived on a little farm um, so he was farming and he also needed to translate the scriptures and Emma helped him but she of course was busy too so it was really really hard and so when Oliver got there it was wonderful because he helped Joseph right and they just worked all day and all night they just constantly were translating Joseph would say out loud, um, he would read it, he would translate it to English and say it to Oliver, and Oliver would write it down on paper. Um, and Heavenly Father told them that Oliver could translate himself if he had enough faith. And so he tries to do that, him and Joseph switch places, and he can't do it. And the Lord tells them that the reason he can't do it is because Oliver didn't ask for help in the proper way. So from this, we learn about how to pray and how to have he um, excuse me how to have Heavenly Father help us make decisions. Okay, so it says the first step when we're praying about something we need help with, um, the first step is that we think about it ourselves in our heads. We analyze the problem and we make a decision on our own. And then we go to Heavenly Father and we say, is this the right choice? This choice I want to make, is it right? And if it is correct, then we will feel good inside. Um, we'll feel peaceful, we'll feel happy. Just like when Oliver prayed if he should go and help Joseph, he felt really peaceful and happy. And he just knew, he knew it was the right decision. Um, 
if the decision is not correct, you won't feel good. You're going to feel kind of icky inside. You'll be worried. You'll be stressed out. You'll be confused. Um, those aren't good feelings, right? So that must mean you need to go back to the problem and figure out a different solution. All right. In Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 9, verse 8, um, this is what it says. But behold, I say unto you that you must study it out in your mind. Then you must ask me if it be right. And if it is right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you. Therefore, you shall feel that it is right. So that's kind of what we're talking about, right? You study it out in your mind, as the scripture says. Then you ask if it's right. And if it's right, you'll feel burning in your bosom. So in your heart, you'll feel really good and warm and cozy. And you'll know it's right. All right. In Doctor and Covenants chapter 6, it also talks about how Joseph and Oliver had a lot of reason to be afraid. Um, they People didn't treat Joseph well at all. He was persecuted. He was abused. He They lived in poverty because they were so busy translating the scriptures, they couldn't really work, and so they were very, very poor. Um, so Heavenly Father gives them the message um, in Doctrine and Covenants chapter 6, verse 34. It says, Therefore, fear not, little flock, do good. Um, and so that little part right there, fear not, little flock. So a flock is like a group of animals, usually a, sheep, a group of sheep is what we think of, right? And say our Savior is often compared to a shepherd, okay? And so what does a shepherd do? He watches over his sheep day and night. He makes sure that they're safe from wolves and other predators, from weather, from any danger. They love them, and they want to protect them. And the Savior is the same with us. We are his flock, us people here on earth. We are the Savior's flock, and he's our shepherd. He loves us, and he wants to protect us. And because of that, we don't need to be afraid. Okay? Um, in chapter 6, verse 36, it says, Look unto me in every thought. Doubt not, fear not. And so this scripture reminds me of a saying that I really like, and it's faith, not fear. And that's kind of my motto whenever I feel nervous or scared or worried. I think faith, not fear. Okay, so get rid of that fear and only focus on having faith that Heavenly Father is going to help me. And I know that faith and fear, they can't exist in your mind at the same time. They are opposites of each other. So I remember when I was going through college, I was learning how to be a teacher. And every time I had to go and teach a new class of students, I would get really, really nervous. Um, and so that's what I would always say to myself is faith, not fear. And it really brought me a lot of comfort because it focused my mind on Heavenly Father, on that if I pray for help, just like Oliver did, um, if I pray for an answer, then I know I'm going to receive it. I know Heavenly Father loves me and he wants to help me. Um, the same goes for um, every time I have to give a talk in sacrament meeting. Um, and I know you guys can, you might feel that way too. Back when we had primary and you'd have to give a talk or a prayer or scripture, you'd probably get nervous, right? I know that I would. And so that's what I would say to myself, faith, not fear. And it reminds me a lot of this scripture in Doctrine and Covenants that look unto me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. So focus your thoughts on the Savior. Um, don't doubt yourself and don't be afraid because they will, Heavenly Father will help you. Okay, let me see if I missed anything that I wanted to tell you. I think I got it all. Um, so this week, um, I'm so glad you guys get to go to school. I'm so, so happy that you don't have to stay home all day. So when you're at school, if you ever feel nervous, maybe you're nervous about making new friends or maybe you're nervous about a test, anything that it might be, I want you to remember what we talked about. Doubt not, fear not, okay? Faith over fear. Um, you can pray to Heavenly Father, and He's going to help you. He'll comfort you. He'll make you feel braver. He'll help you have courage. Um, and I know that a lot of the time when I pray for help, when I'm nervous or worried, I can feel that worried feeling disappear, and it leaves my body, and instead I feel really peaceful and happy. Because anything good and happy and wonderful comes from our Heavenly Father. He wants us to be happy. Okay. 
So I miss you guys so much. I have been just really, really anxious to get back to primary. Um, we still aren't allowed to though, but hopefully sometime this year we will be able to start meeting again. Um, hopefully soon. Fingers crossed, okay? Fingers crossed that we can start meeting again. Um, I know that your teachers are anxious to see you too. So hopefully it'll happen soon. Um, I hope you guys have a good week. Bye. Hello and welcome to singing time this week. I want to start out with a scripture from our Come Follow Me lesson. It is Doctrine and Covenants, section 8, verse 2. Yea, behold, I will tell you in your mind and in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which shall come upon you and which shall dwell in your heart. This has to do with our personal revelation. When we are seeking answers from our Heavenly Father, He will give us the answer in our mind and in our heart. We want those both to tell us that the answer is true. So I have two people that I want you to meet. Here is the Queen of Hearts. I am the Queen of Hearts. I rely on how I feel in my heart when I have a problem. I focus on my feelings. Now you can meet the Queen of Wisdom. I am the Queen of Wisdom. I rely on what I think and what I know to be true. When I need answers, I rely on my mind. Now that you have met both of our queens, they are going to play rock, paper, scissors. Like so rock. I want you to play along. So choose a partner to play rock, paper, scissors against. Mm -hmm. And the goal Mama. is to not beat each other. The Mama. goal is for you both to get rock, Mama. you both to get paper, or you both to get scissors. So we're going to try and make the Queen of Hearts match up with, with the Queen of Wisdom. Because when we are seeking revelation, we want our heart to match up with our mind and our mind to match with our heart. All right? So if you both, with your partner, get rock, you are going to sing the song holding your nose like this. That's if you both get rock. Okay, if you both get scissors, you are both going to stand on one leg as you sing the song. And if you both get paper, you are going to need your ribbon wand. So from your singing time packet, and you will wave your ribbon as you sing. Okay, let's start. Okay, both of the queens lined up on rock. So we are singing our song, plugging our notes. If you got something different, you either do, if you got scissors, you will stand on one leg. And if you got paper, you will rave your, rave, <laughs> wave your ribbon wand around. Okay, we'll be plugging our noses. When Christ was on the earth, he promised he would send the Holy Ghost to comfort us, our true eternal friend. The Holy Spirit whispers with a still small voice. He testifies of God and Christ and makes our hearts rejoice. Round two. Both the queens lined up on scissors. So we are going to stand on one foot while we sing. So we're going to rate, why can't I say that? Wave our ribbons. This is my ribbon one today. 
as we sing. So you guys, if you got rock, you'll plug your nose, and if you got scissors, you'll stand on one leg. Think of the Queen of Hearts and the Queen of Knowledge. And remember that we'll receive an answer in our minds or in our mind and in our heart that it's true. Okay, we are going to review the song My Own Sacred Grove. We know the first verse and the first chorus very well. We are going to learn the second verse. So let's sing through what we know and then we'll go over the new stuff. choices with so much at stake. So here we have a picture of all of the choices. So it goes, so many choices with so much at stake. Can you remember that? Think of the S's as we sing it. So many choices with so much at stake. Now we have a picture of different paths we can take. Life's full of pathways, but which should I take? The next line says, as I lift up in prayer, in the name of the Son. So here we have a girl praying. As I lift up in prayer, in the name of the Son. But the next line is, through the power of the Holy Ghost, answers will come. So when we are confirmed after we are baptized, we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So that's why we have a picture of someone getting blessed with the Holy Ghost. Uh -oh. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, answers will come. The next line is similar to the first verse. It says, Heavenly Father is there ready to answer my prayer. So here we have the picture of the first vision showing Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father is there. And then one more picture of somebody praying, ready to answer my prayer. In our first verse we say, coming to answer his prayer. In this verse, it's about us. And we say, ready to answer my prayer. Okay, let's sing it through with these pictures. Choices with so much at stake Lives full of pathways, but which should I take? If I lift up in prayer in the name of the Son Through the power of the Holy Ghost, answers will come Heavenly Father is there Ready to answer my prayer Okay, let's do it again. Did those pictures help you? Let's do it again. We will sing through the chorus after the second verse. So many choices with so much at stake. Lives full of pathways, but which should I take? If I lift up in prayer in the name of the Son, through the power of the Holy Ghost, answers will come. Heavenly Father is there, ready to answer my prayer.
good. Let's do it all together. The first verse, chorus, second verse, chorus. Here we go. exactly with what we were just talking about, personal revelation, that if we turn to prayer, we can get answers from our Heavenly Father. All right, I have one more scripture for you. It's Doctrine and Covenants, section 6, verse 36. It says, look unto me in every thought, doubt not, fear not. Life can be kind of scary, but if we look to our Heavenly Father and trust in Him, we don't have to be afraid. So, what I want you to go get right now is a piece of paper and something to draw with. All right, you've got 10 seconds. Ready, go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, what I want you to draw on your piece of paper that you've gotten is a picture that will remind you to look to Jesus. Now, I'm not quite sure what all that will mean to you. Maybe it is a picture of Jesus, or maybe it is a reminder to pray or to read your scriptures, but I want you to draw something that's gonna remind you when you see it that you are going to think of our Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ and not be afraid. So as you draw this, we are going to listen to the hymn, Let Us All Press On. And in this hymn, it talks about reasons why we don't need to be afraid. Okay, here we go.
So some of the things that I heard in that song of reasons that we don't need to be afraid is that the Lord is on our side. It says, fear not, for the Lord is on our side. Another thing that I heard was that if we do what's right, we'll have no need to fear um, because the Lord will help us and be near. So we have a lot of reasons that we don't need to be afraid, that we can trust in our Heavenly Father and Jesus and trust in the promises that they've made to us, that they will comfort us with the Holy Ghost, and they have given us a prophet to warn us of danger, and they've given us personal revelation that we can be warned of danger for ourselves. And we can receive answers for ourselves. So we have nothing to be afraid of. We can have courage. And I know that is true. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you all have a great week. And remember to practice the songs that we've learned today. I will see you next time. Bye.